Hey, how's it going? This is my first ever video about DaVinci Resolve. Um, I'm a long time Adobe promo, eh, <laughs> sorry. I'm a long time Adobe user since uh, version 15 came out or version 5, 15, what am I thinking? I think it was since 2015, version 5, 5.5, one of those is when I started with Adobe, switched there from Final Cut 6, because uh, Final Cut 10 was a disaster when it came out for myself in the wedding, wedding industry, as I believe it. Uh, but DaVinci 7, I've always, 17 that is, I've been interested about DaVinci for a while, and I'm always looking for something that works better. And I really have no skin in the game. Like I don't pay for my Adobe license because I get it through work. So it's not like I'm saving money by switching to DaVinci. However, I have noticed, especially because I've been doing a lot more 4K footage that Adobe on my MacBook, and I have like a top of line 2019 MacBook Pro, it still chokes on the multi-camera edits for uh, my wedding videos. So I found that DaVinci, I've, I've been doing some things. I've just been fooling around. I put together a short video the other day. I've done this multi-camera thing in it before and it doesn't choke. It, it, it just continues playing. So whatever the algorithms or programming they did with it, there's something different that Blackmagic is doing with their DaVinci that Adobe just hasn't figured out or maybe just Adobe is too big uh, to of a monster now. So I just recently made a video about how I do my uh, timeline syncing with Adobe and Pluralize, an extension outside of uh, Adobe to sync my multi-cameras together in a timeline. To do that, the DaVinci 16 version, I tried it. I don't like how it works because when I'm doing wedding ceremonies, you know, my camera breaks up the clips, the an hour long clip into like, you know, nine, 10 different segments. Cause if I'm shooting 4k, they're five and a half minute or four, uh, six minute video clips each. So it doesn't work that way. And I tried round tripping it through pluralize. And when I came back and they were out of sync. So I did the whole like line it up, export the XML, sync it in pluralize, bring it back in. And it didn't work right. I did figure out a way, however, within DaVinci itself to do what I want to do. So uh, this is kind of like a little weird workaround, but I got to work and it works pretty well. So, and it, hopefully I remember all my steps now and, and check it out. So first of all, here on the screen, you can see I've created a, a bin just for the ceremony, I separate everything out. And I've also, I took the step of color coding uh, camera A as orange and camera B as blue or whatever. I got my two lav mics here. So I have all the stuff figured out. Now, the one thing you can't do is you can't just bring all your clips from A and all your clips from B and it sync up because what happens is it doesn't like it. So, you know, if I were to do that, let's just do it anyways. You know, I bring in all these to a timeline and I, we're just making a new timeline here. I don't care right now. I bring in these, whatever. And I select them all. The, there's not even an option to the sync because right now this is still in beta. I'm hoping that when the full version comes out, maybe that it will not be a problem anymore, but you can't do a lot of clips in a, in one line and have it sync up for whatever reason. So my little hack that I figured out is, and I'm going to start, here's my clips. I'm going to look at the second clip maybe here because there's people talking in it. So that's always a good thing to sync up on. I'm going to bring that down from camera A in my timeline. And then within my camera B stuff, I'm going to see if I can locate that same spot. Yeah, so here we have people talking. So there, that's the same area. We're going to overlap a little bit. That's fine. I'm going to bring that here to V2. Now I should, let me go and rename my uh, timeline here, by the way. Always keep track of your timelines because I'm going to end up making a bunch of different timelines and tracks and things like that during this. I like to keep track of it all. I'm also going to bring down my two lav mics into the audio here. So right now I have everything down here. Nothing is synced up. You see I have a lot more audio than I do video and that's fine. I'm going to fill it all out later, but this is where I'm going to start because now when I select all these and right click, here it is, the auto align clips based on waveform. That's the new thing that I'm excited about. So I'm gonna click on that. 
and my computer's fan is blowing. You can probably hear that in the microphone, which is annoying. But there we go. You can see it moves stuff over. If I come over here and listen. Towards all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways. All of the audio is there. We have it all synced up. It sounds good. We can if we make these tracks taller. You can see the audio is lined up now. So the waveforms are lining up. But we now we don't have everything we need. In fact, um, we're not even have the, all of the original audio. So we have to kind of like now trick it a little bit. This is this is where it gets a little tricky. Um, this is a little labor intensive. This is why I hope they fix this with future uh, releases and updates. So now I'm gonna I just say I selected all that. I moved it to the right to give myself a little bit more room here on the left side of my timeline. So I gave myself about 20 minutes of room. So I can now extend out the front of my audio to as far as those lobs go. I'm gonna still trim them, but that's fine. I'm gonna just leave them there for now. And now I'm gonna fill in the front and back side of all these clips. So you can see this is clip 646 from camera A. That's my orange camera. So 646 is right here. So this is one clip that goes in front of that. And after 46, we have 47 through 54. All those clips around, plop them down behind it. And there we go. Make sure they all look like they're full length there. They are. And then we're going to do the same thing with my camera B. So 216 was the clip beforehand. I probably don't need the, all of them because let's be frank here. I start my camera B rolling a lot sooner than it needs to to make sure I don't miss anything. And 217 through the end there. Because no, I put that camera B up in the choir loft long before anything starts. So now, now we can just kind of randomly go through and just double check. Adriana, see if this rings. All that sounds in sync right now. Everything is sounding great. Trim off this front part because I don't need all of that there. So we're just going to. Oops, clip all this. And ripple delete everything to the front there. So now everything is in the front. So we are almost there. We have everything synced up. And this is how I like my multi camera setup for uh, wedding ceremonies and things because I want all my audio sources there. I use them all, I blend them all together. I don't want to replace it and just have one microphone be the whole thing. I need the two lobs. I have one lob on the groom. I have one lob on the pulpit. I have a shotgun mic on my camera that's moving around with me. And I have a, a microphone in the choir loft. I'm probably going to lose that one because that's going to be, you know, it's further away. So the time is going to be a little off on that. But everything else I want to keep. So now we need to go ahead and make these clips into some sort of multi-camera sequence. So this is the little tricky part here because you have to do kind of like a little extra step to do this next part where I have to kind of make a compound clip. Then I need to make a new timeline. I need to make the compound clips into multi-camera clip. It's watch. Um, first of all, I'm going to unlink the audio file. So I'm just selecting the video at this point. And I'm going to make a new compound clip. I'm going to call this compound ceremony. So I know what I'm, what it is. And now I have a new compound clip. So there's my ceremony timeline and there's my compound clip. Okay. So here's my, here's my little trick here. Now I have a compound clip. I have my ceremony timeline. I don't want to destroy the original timeline because I like to keep things, you know, it doesn't hurt you to have extra timelines. So I'm going to duplicate this timeline, duplicate timeline. In my copy, I'm going to call this, oops, not mean to erase everything, ceremony sync. Oops, hopes if I can spell. So that is ceremony sync. So this is now, I'm going to open this up. This is where I want to do my multicam. And I'm actually going to delete the compound clip that's in there. I'm going to come over to my compound ceremony inside my bin here right click on it and convert the compound clip into multi-cam clip. 
And now I can drag this multi-can clip down into that ceremony synced. Oh, I hate when it doesn't do it right. Drag it down in there. Okay, so now I need to enable multi-camera viewing. I need to be able to see the multiple cameras that I'm switching from. Even though it's only two, I still need to see them. Uh, oftentimes I'll either do two or three uh, different cameras. I haven't done four yet. That might be a little much. But uh, first of all, I don't have the ability to turn on right now. I have to go to the top right corner here and turn on this little button right here, the dual viewer mode. So I can see the dual program and source mode. And now my source window on the left here, I'm gonna click this little drop down on the bottom left here and say multi-camera. And now I can see my multi-camera. And now I can start, you know, I'm just gonna do this randomly anywhere here. I'm gonna clip one. I can switch to camera two. Back to camera one. Back to camera two because someone's in the way. Back to camera one. Back to camera two. You know, we switch back and forth, back and forth. It hasn't choked yet, which I love. When you zoom in on the timeline here, you can see every time I made a cut, just using the number keys on my keyboard, the top of the keyboard, to cut between one and two. You could also hover over and use, you can see I can just click on the mouse. I don't like that way. I just want to use my fingers. Uh, it's like being in a control room for a TV studio. I'm used to that. So if you've ever been a TD, you know how to do cutting with your fingers. Um, I just find it really easy. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four with your fingers like that. And that's how I can go through and do all my cuts for that. And once I'm done doing the cuts, then you can see this, the, the uh, color is a little bit off. Unfortunately, when I got to this wedding, um, I was a little rushed in getting set up. A whole other complication with that, traffic and things like that. I don't usually like to be that late, but unfortunately there were circumstances beyond my control, but luckily you can just go into your color uh, grading area here within DaVinci and go through and do your color grading. And it's really easy to do. Although I would not do it from this point. What I would do is actually go and you can open up your compound clip in the timeline. So I just right clicked, I said open uh, in timeline. And now from there I can go to my color and I can correct all the different clips inside the timeline. And you can always copy it. Once you get one correct, you can copy and paste it to the rest. Uh, and then you have that done. And then what I also like is I can go into far light here and I can do all my audio editing on the timeline afterwards. Oh, I'm on the wrong timeline. So if I'm ceremony synced, once I go here, now I see all my audio in here. And it's a lot easier to edit the audio in this area. Uh, so this is where I'm going to do my audio editing. Now, this is a wedding I did in the past in Premiere last year. So this is this wedding's already done, but I've been just playing around with this in DaVinci 17 and I, I'm really impressed. Uh, aside from like having to do a little bit more work to get synced up, it's still a lot less work than I used to have to do 10 years ago when it was tape based and you had to match it off of waveforms manually before there were plugins that did it for you. I'm really excited to see, I, I'm excited to try a whole wedding on DaVinci because I just find that it's a lot easier going back and forth between the different segments within DaVinci. Whereas in Adobe to do my audio editing, like if I want to do really in-depth audio editing, like background removal and things like that, I'd have to round trip it out to audition and then back in, which it does. And it's pretty seamless, but it does create a lot of extra, extra uh, files and things like that in the background. And it means I have more than one program running at a time instead of being able to do everything within the one program. So I'm kind of excited about how DaVinci 17 is gonna change my workflow. Again, like I said, it's not like I pay for Adobe. I'm still gonna have Adobe on my computer anyways, but uh, the, just the workflow and the fact that it doesn't choke, it hasn't choked on me yet uh, editing these videos in 4K. So that to me is exciting as well because that's the most frustrating thing about multi-camera editing a lot of times is I'll be editing for five minutes and I have to stop and wait for the computer to catch up and continue on again. Having that happen several times during an hour long ceremony makes that editing process takes, you know, 50%, 70% longer, which is just frustrating. It, it, you don't get in the flow of it and it's really annoying. So I hope this was helpful for people uh, with DaVinci 17 
and maybe trying to do a multi-camera edit more than just like a five minute video, but actually like a long event. You know, now we can talk about doing two, three, four, five cameras. That's an hour long, four different things. And it's gonna be, I think a game changer. And this is by the way, on the free version. I am not, I have not paid for the full version. This is the free version of DaVinci 17. So all the stuff I've done here today is in that free version, which is pretty powerful stuff. Um, if you like this video, uh, please hit the subscribe button so you can see more tutorials in the future. Thanks.